First, let me start by welcoming you to episode one of Axon Education, where our sole purpose is to arm you with all of the tools that you will ever need in order to make one of the most important decisions of your life, how to buy a kiteboard. Today, we're going to be talking about rockers. And even though when I hear the term rockers, I am instantly brought back to 1986 of my parents going absolutely nuts at a Bon Jovi concert, today we'll be talking about rockers of kiteboards. Let's start by defining rocker. Rocker is the curvature from tip to tip or tip to tail of your board. The two most common rocker patterns are continuous rocker and three-stage rocker. As the word suggests, continuous rocker is a smooth continuous curve from tip to tip with no strange angle changes. A three-stage rocker, on the other hand, usually has a flatter curve section between your feet and an angle change at the tips. Continuous rockers typically give you a smoother ride and more control, while three-stage rockers are typically better for pop off of small waves or kickers. Pretty much every brand has their own names for their rocker patterns, which makes it pretty hard to figure out what it is that they're exactly talking about. No matter what rocker is called and who is calling it that, there are really only three categories that we can group all of rockers into to help us learn what rocker really does. Flat rocker, moderate rocker, and high rocker. I know what you're thinking. How in the world did he come up with such unique category names? I'm a walking thesaurus, friends, what can I say? Let's start with flat rocker. Generally, a board with really flat rocker will rise no more than about 3 centimeters from the center to the tips, with some being significantly less than that. You're mostly, but not always, find this style of rocker on light wind boards. It is very flat between your feet to keep as much board surface area on the water to generate more power. The goal with a flatter rocker is to generate the maximum amount of power for the board size, so the obvious benefit of a flat rocker is that you'll be able to create lots of drive and power in less wind than a board with a non-flat rocker. The negatives are that you can get overpowered easier when the wind picks up, and that it is a bit easier to bury the nose in chop. Moderate rocker is the industry standard for pretty much all boards grouped into the free ride category. This rocker usually falls between the 3cm and 6cm range from center of board to the tips, which is really just a mathematical way of saying that moderate rocker is somewhere between the rocker of an outhouse door and this thing. This is the most all-around rocker because it allows riders to get on the water early, as it has enough power and drive in lighter winds, but also allows complete control when the wind does pick up. The only negative of a moderate rocker is perhaps the giant range of kite boards that utilize it. Just because a board has a moderate rocker does not mean that it will do as advertised. So remember that rockers are only a piece of the puzzle when learning about kiteboard design. The last category of rocker is the high rocker and is usually, but not always, associated with more progressive freestyle or wake style shapes. Typically has more than 6 cm rise from the center of the board to the tips. Riders wanting boards built more specifically for high power moves are usually drawn towards the benefits of high rocker boards. The goal of the high rocker board is to provide ultimate maneuverability and comfort in high wind and for landing with tons of speed, which means that a high rocker board could also be good for a beginner or intermediate who is in a location with frequent high winds. On the downside, a high rocker board typically underperforms in light winds as it cannot generate as much power as a moderate or flat rocker board due to less surface area being in contact with the water. So which rocker is right for you? One correct and least helpful answer is that any of the rockers may be right for you depending on what kind of riding you want to be doing and where you are going to be doing it. But that's sort of like asking your girlfriend what she wants to do later and she says, well, whatever you want to do, honey. Uh. So let's try to actually answer the question. Beginners can excel with any of the rocker patterns mentioned. 
but only because of varying conditions for learning. If you're learning in a high wind location where it's always blasting 25 knots, a higher rock or board is your ticket because it would allow you to maintain control with a lot of power and speed. On the contrary, if you're learning in a light wind location, a moderate or even flat rocker board could be perfect as it allows you to generate power much easier than a high rocker board. Intermediates typically gravitate towards moderate rockers as it is the least exclusive of all of the rocker patterns. If you want a little bit of everything, a moderate rocker board is the right choice for you. All terrain riding, boosting, cruising, etc, etc, you get the point. As an intermediate rider, a moderate rocker is the most all around that you can get. Advanced riders all over the map. High rockers would be the first thing that comes to mind for an advanced rider, but truthfully, advanced riders need to be in tune with where they are riding and make decisions based on that. You may think that you need the latest high rocker wake style board on the market, but if you live in a spot that is lucky to get 13 knots of wind, that might not be the best choice. Advanced riders usually have the experience to utilize the performance upgrades that some of the higher end boards have. For the most part, brands nowadays have a high end higher rocker board and a high end moderate rocker board to make sure that all types of riders have the same quality available to them. Hopefully in this episode, you've learned a little bit about kiteboard rockers and are now not dumber for having watched this. If you have any questions or comments, you can utilize any of these fine social media outlets or just send us an email. Please check our website for news, updates, and for new episodes, which I promise will be coming out whenever I feel like it. Until then, thanks for watching episode one and see you on the water.